The next question is on non-expansions. And just to remind you, non-expansion is a kind of operator that we can apply to a vector. So here's two vectors, x and y. And we've got some operator, circle cross. And what that operator does is it takes a vector and maps it down to a scalar. Now, for defining what a non-expansion is, it's going to be helpful to have a notion of a distance between two vectors. So if x and y are our vectors, we'll say the distance between them is the maximum over all component positions of the difference between x and y at those positions. So we say an operator is a non-expansion if and only if it has the property that if you take two vectors x and y, take the summary of x and the summary of y and look at the difference between them, that has to be smaller than or equal to the distance between the two vectors. So in other words, summarizing the vectors doesn't make them any further apart than they were before. So let's take an operator, word superscript j, which takes a vector and returns the j largest element of x. So word 1 returns the first largest element, which we have a name for. Word n, if we imagine the vector has length n, has the nth largest, which we also have a name for. Word of n over 2 returns the n over 2th largest, which we also have a name for. And so on. Now, it turns out that word j is a non-expansion for all j. In class we did max and from max it follows that min, but we didn't show that it was true for all j. So let me prove that and then I'll give a question that's related. So to do this proof it's going to be helpful to think about two vectors x and y and we're going to assume that y is sorted without loss of generality. What I mean by that is the components of y have some ordering to them, but the ordering itself doesn't really matter. So let's just define the ordering so that y comes out sorted. Uh, but x isn't necessarily sorted. X, and if it's not sorted, that means it has some number of inversions in it. An inversion is the sort of thing where we've got numbers in the vector that are not in their sorted order. And a sorted list has no inversions in it, but an unsorted list has one or more. And we know from, from the basic theory of sorting lists that if we have an inversion in a list like this and we swap them, that's going to reduce the number of inversions. It may actually make the list sorted at this point, but it doesn't make it any less sorted. So x prime is a vector that is a copy of x, except we've actually done, we've actually swapped out. Uh, one of the inversions. And what we'd like to show is that the distance between x prime and y is smaller, smaller than or equal to the distance between x and y. So by making this swap, by making them more sorted, we've made them no further apart, possibly closer together. So here's the generic situation. We, we're, we're going to do a swap on x at some position, and here's what we know that A and B are inverted with respect to each other. They're not in sorted order. So B is less than or equal to, well actually let's say B is strictly less than A. And we know that C is less than or equal to D by our assumption that Y is sorted. All right, so I'm gonna make a claim that if we make little baby vectors consisting just of the, the values at these two positions, so little two position vectors, that the distance between the original baby vectors, this is sort of playing the role of x and this is playing the role of y, the distance between them, if we do the swap, we make new baby vector x prime, that x prime is closer to y than, or no further than from y than x was. The reason for this actually follows from something that we know already, that max and min are non-expansions because the difference between b and c is exactly the difference between the mins 
and the difference between A and D is the difference between the maxes. And we know that the difference between the mins is less than or equal to the difference between the vectors, and the difference between the maxes is less than or equal to the difference between the vectors. So this follows. And that should be enough to get us the rest of the way there. Because if it was the case that the difference between x and y, the maximum difference between x and y, was in, say, this component, which doesn't involve where we did the swap, then after the swap, this is still going to be the largest difference. So nothing will have changed. But on the other hand, if the largest difference actually was at one of these two positions, then we've actually made it smaller, or smaller than or equal to. So no matter where the, the maximum difference is, having done this swap doesn't make it any larger, possibly makes it smaller. So continuing this argument inductively, If we keep moving from the original x to a slightly more sorted x to an even more sorted x until we eventually get to a completely sorted x, that the difference between the sorted x and y is less than or equal to the distance between the original x and y. So putting the pieces together, the jth largest value of x minus the jth largest value of y, absolute value, so the difference between the two summaries is exactly equal to, well, what is the jth largest value of x? It's the sorted value of x, take the jth, compo jth component of that, minus y, the jth component of that, because y is already sorted by our assumption, which is less than or equal to the difference, the distance between x star and y, because this is the maximum component difference, and this is the difference at one particular component. And we already showed that that is less than or equal to the distance between x and y. So the summary is less than or equal to the vectors, the difference between the vectors. OK, that leads us to our question. So we've got two vectors, x and y. And they're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 components long. And I've helpfully left out two of the digits, two of the, the values in the vectors. And let's say that we know that the median of x and the, uh, the difference between the median of x and the median of y is 10. What's the minimum possible value of the distance between x and y? Now I just proved something about the relationship between these, but I actually want you to fill in a concrete value such that it's actually attainable, that there's a way of filling in these numbers so that the distance between them is that small. 